mean anything But thanks for listening yeah. Hello everybody and welcome to Weezy Things episode 178 Sponsored by Manscaped 3, 2, 1 Happy New Year from our friends over at Manscaped, the ball has officially dropped, but that doesn't mean you have to drop the ball on your balls in 2023. Whether you had a New Year's kiss or not, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming have you covered for your much-needed resolution of bringing sexy back. Join the 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use the code We Say Thanks for 20% off and free shipping. Let us have a toast for a new year, new you. And a new you with no pubes. Thank you, Manscaped, as always, with the riveting blurb as per norm. Uh, Very good. Yes. I mean, I'm not a big fan of like shaving them completely off. I'm being honest, Cinderin. The balls? Yes. Yeah, I think you should leave them on. Well, in general, it's not like I'm getting it like as close as possible. It's just I trim them, you know? Mm -hmm. So. I don't know if... Actually, leave it in the comments what you guys do with your balls. I'm interested. If any of you shaves them off, then please don't leave that in the comments. Uh, no, I actually want to know if you guys actually shave to the point if where you, everything is If you shave your balls off, Shannon, you don't have balls anymore. Not ta you're talking about castration? That's the joke? I mean, you. it was your words, not mine. I want to know if people shave their balls. Please let us know All in the right. comments. Actually, if you're a woman... This is good for the algorithm. It doesn't have to be only for men either. I'm just interested. Uh, just in general. That makes it sound creepier if I'm including women, actually. Just the men answer. <laughs> we'll just move on now. All right. So thank you to our beautiful <laughs> patrons. Tell me if you shave your pubes or not. Uh, from the in Bruce tier, Burrito McBurrito Face TI in Auckland. Rupus, Q Ludes is not endorsed by We Say Things, but we are fans. Stupid underscore co-pilot. God bless those timestamps. D2 Bowie. Yatoro does it again. Cinderin. Can't wait for Earthblade now. Thanks for the ad, Sind. You're welcome. Oscar Magdev Seeker wishes all y'all a happy new year and hopes Cinderin smash some plates for good luck. My wait, grand... why would I do... Is that a... Is that a Danish thing? Uh... You're gonna have to Google if that's a Danish thing and you're Danish. <laughs> that sounds more Broken Greek. Broken plates, Denmark. While it might be famous for the Greeks to smash plates during celebratory occasions, it's popular over in Denmark, too. How in fact, you... on New Year's Eve, the Danes throw unused plates that have been saved up throughout the year at the front doors of family and friends for good luck. I have never heard of this. <laughs> this is not normal for me. Sandra, you need to get out of the oh, house. Touch grass, as the kids like, say these none days. None of my friends have done this that I remember on New Year. That's cool. I mean, people... People put fireworks uh, in different places instead, which is even worse. So okay. thanks for that. All right. My grandma still doesn't know what Dota is. That's not just me randomly saying that. That's the name from In Bruges here. Mm -hmm. uh, Disco Farm D, Taste Me Boo, Stoogey Mix Stooge, Daddy Stooge, Notice Me Senpai Stooge, Santa's Ball Sack Stooge, Schadenfreud Stooge, The Mega Pope and Hello Friends and Sons Fan. I hope you all have a lovely holiday season. TI in New Zealand. Thank you, friend. Zan Xavier, Nate Thicko, Zero One Hamscroats, Bacon, Shark TM, Janie, Dop, Nothing to See Here, Underscore Man, Guitar Strings, Yves Grimaud, Ben, his Patreon names are too long, and they're annoying to read out on the podcast, Broomhead, thank you, Ben, Wooden Aftertaste, Anonymous, and Humans Contain Enough Fat to Make Seven Bars of Soap, Enough Iron to Make a Nail, and Enough Carbon to Make a Pencil, Mr. Niebling. That's interesting. Only seven bars of soap. Only one pencil. I can, do, I can do better. I can make more soap than that. I can make way more than that. I mean, enough that's iron true. to make a nail. If, is that the it's average human? Pencil. Because in America, they could probably make like 14 plus and be proud of it. Right? We're very clean over here. Is this like a scale? Yeah. If you're trying to impress it, when you go on a dating app, you're like, I am, I'm a nine on the soap scale. <laughs> that's right. That's the imperial system. <laughs> right. Just expanding it every day. Uh, okay, one thing I just want, I don't know why I'm mentioning this, but we didn't have any topics, but then we added one last minute, so maybe it's fine, but whatever. Uh, I have decided that I will be upgrading my computer, uh, and Nikki's is well overdue. She literally took my old computer, and I haven't upgraded oh. mine in four and a half years now. 
yeah, I usually I would do like bang for the buck type stuff. So I think we've talked about this. I would usually do bang uh -huh. for the buck, like a like a good CPU, a good graphics card, but it wouldn't be like top of the top of the top. And it would last mm. me like two years. I would upgrade every two, every two years. This last one I had has been four and a half years. It's a 2080 Ti. I can't believe it's four and a half years and a 9900K Intel. And I think it's, I think I'm ready, ready for the next step. So yeah, I'm going to be, so this, I actually made a tweet about this because I wasn't sure. I, I am too lazy right now and also too overworked to be bothered to make my own computer, even though I've custom built every computer I've ever had. I think I'm finally going to do pre-built. And it's also really hard to find 4090s just to buy, which is like the redonkulously expensive one, but that's what I want. So if you guys have suggestions, I, people made some nice suggestions in Twitter. I'm just interested if, in more into the YouTube comments, but uh, for a pre-built, I 4090 Ti, or Ti, 4090 graphics card and the 13900K Intel CPU are the two choices I've made. And past that, I'm probably going to do a, some research on the motherboard and a couple other things, but uh, yeah, that's going to be one expensive motherfucker. But, but if it's it, a totally new machine, right? You're not keeping anything from your current one. I'm turning this machine into my Plex machine, so it's going to be great. Can't wait for that. It's just a standalone I, Plex machine, or VR, or both. I don't remember exactly when my PC is from, but I really need to just get a new PC as well. I've just been delaying it. Mm. I need to get it done. Which graphics card do you think I have? I think we've had this discussion. Is it the 1080? Oh, yeah. 1070 GTX. Holy shit! That's insane. Yeah. I play I play Dota with that, and I stream 60 FPS 1080p. And it can actually run that, and I can have like a... How much FPS do I have in game when I do that? About 100 while streaming. Mm. It's pretty impressive, actually, that that old of a setup can run that well. But it would be nice to be able to stream and just have, you know, fully... Not but it, effectively not being able to notice that you're streaming because when I do switch on the stream, my performance does drop. So, um, oh. but yeah, I, I should definitely get a new computer as well at some point in the near future. That, yeah, you should. We should all build together. I mean, I, I'm going to have Nikki get built one as well. So we're going to have two monstrous computers. You can do it at the same time. The, re the reason I'm flipping this switch is because today I was playing Valorant for the first time in a long time on stream. Mm. And it was slow as fuck. Now you might say, oh. why would it be slow with a 2080 Ti? And I have a 9900K, which is still, I would consider that still pretty good, I guess. It is four and mm -hmm. a half years old. I have four monitors. It actually stresses the computer out so much to have four monitors. And yeah, I'm sick and tired of not being able to stream FPS games. So 4090, here we come. That's literally half the computer cost. Cinder is the fucking graphics card. Yep. It's obscene. It is obscene. And I don't know if... How much more expensive is a 4090 than like a 4080? Well, 4080 is a pile of shit, so don't get that one. That's for sure. Okay. So Actually, that's the what? thing about the... Like this... I think the 4090 is extremely good, just ridiculously overpriced. And every other NVIDIA card... I haven't done that much research. Every other NVIDIA card seems pretty underwhelming compared to like AMD. Okay. I'm just going for I, top line. I wouldn't be able to correct you if you were wrong. I'm, I just know that for the diff, like for the previous iterations of NVIDIA cards, the price incremental from like 40, 80, or 3080 to 3090 or whatever, the increase in price relative to the increase in performance was ridiculous, yeah. right? On previous uh, iterations of the card. But maybe it's good on this one. I don't know. They, I think we talked. Did we talk about that? They had uh, a forty eighty. They had two versions of the forty eighty that they announced, and people were so mad about the lower end that they actually canceled it, and they just came oh. out with it. They literally repackaged it as the forty seventy Ti, and it came out like today or something or yesterday. Oh, but people <laughs> are really upset with Nvidia. They really fucked the pooch. Or is that the saying? Sure. I, I don't, yeah. Yeah, I think the, the, the moral of my story, I'm not saying everybody should do this because obviously I'm in a position where I can afford this. In the past, I did bang for the buck and it would last me two years based on my job. And I, I like to, you know, I like to upgrade my computer as well. Mm -hmm. This last time with the 2080 Ti, 
I consider that like going overboard, but it lasted me more than twice as long. So yeah. if that's true for this ridiculously expensive computer, it is going to be well worth it for me. So that's why I'm not really batting an eye. I guess there's also the whole perspective of like what's next in computers, right? Like, because what always happens is your old, your old hardware quote unquote expires compared to what the industry can execute in terms of games and in terms of streaming and whatnot. Like, the question is if we keep going in this direction or if some at some point the the software doesn't like like what can we do in the next five years that's going to make the software destroy the gear that you're buying now senator you people have been saying that for how long now and it always i know happens. i know i know i'm saying i'm saying like what's the next step like wh where can we go that would be really taxing like what would you stream now because people are streaming like 4k right on yeah, the but, new rigs with no trouble. Eh, so I wouldn't say that. I mean, 4K at 144 FPS is pretty hard to pull off, especially the if people you're stream 144 FPS. Uh, no, but you're isn't not, the maximum. The cap on Twitch is 60, right? Yes, What's but the cap on YouTube. All right, just listen. Yes, okay. the, the cap. Well, the cap on YouTube is higher. Twitch, okay. yes, it's only 60, but you're still playing the game at 144, or you're trying to. Right, but you're not streaming it. That, that was my point. Yeah, but yeah. It's not going to be playable for you, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I don't know if I even want to do 4K, but yeah, I, I don't think you're even remotely close to hitting the cap on 4K. Like, okay. there's so much more improvement that could be made, I think. Yeah. Uh, and we haven't even started talking about 8K, which I don't even think is really a thing in for computers. It's more TVs, but not even really that. But... There's a lot. It's never yeah. going to end. It's, there's al always going to be something that will fuck your hardware up. <laughs> Sometimes it's a virus, though. Stay away from yeah. those. All right, so one thing we didn't talk about last week because it wasn't quite done was the Bet Boom Christmas Show Tournament. And this is going to trigger some people. We always get comments. Why don't we prepare for the podcast? You guys are so unprofessional. Cinderin looks like a moron, but it's really Suns fan that's the moron. Okay. We understand that these are your comments and your feelings. We did not watch any of these games, but we wanted to discuss the tournament <laughs> for those yeah. that didn't know that it happened. Okay. Yeah. Very important. Go ahead. So, <laughs> yeah. So this tournament had two parts. Um, first, there was the there are four direct invites to the final stage, and then there was a main stage with. Before that final stage, the main stage had two groups of five. Um, the groups, I think, I don't know how much is worth going over. Like, not really too surprising. So, Team Spirit go up ahead on, come out ahead in their group together with Puck Champ, and in the other group, it's uh, Namiga, which I think is a bit surprising. Maybe that they did that well. They went eight and one, and Hellraisers. Uh, but a lot of the other teams in the groups just weren't on the same level on paper. So, really, only the playoffs is what's interesting to most people. The four direct invites were uh, Game and Gladiators, Entity, VP, and Nigma Galaxy. Um, <laughs> so Nigma Galaxy again get a chance to to show improvement, and it just once again didn't really happen. They went one and four. They got two out by Hellraisers. They got two one by Entity. Um, this was the first chance for Nigma to showcase Amar, and he played Huskar and Timbersaw again as Carry. So. Um, yeah, I'm I, not gonna I lie, Cinder. Think... Not to not to change mm -hmm. the subject here, but I would okay. not have been excited to cast this tournament because there's Nigma Galaxy and Namiga Gaming. Yeah, it's confusing. It's not. It's not about it being confusing. I know. I know. God, it's... it stresses me out so much. Mm -hmm. I hate that shit. Continue. Yeah. Um. So Nigma got last. In the in the playoffs, uh, together with Puck Champ, uh, and I guess let's just fast forward to the top four because that's the main thing that's interesting here is the implications going into the DPC. I think because some of these teams are obviously there. Uh, so VP take fourth. This is a totally new VP roster. Um, the th team you would remember as VP is now the Bet Boom team, um, but they weren't playing in this tournament that was run by Bet Boom. I don't know why they weren't there, but they weren't. Um, third place went to Namiga, so again, relative to how they did in the play-in stage, that's pretty good. Second was Team Spirit, and first was Gaming Gladiators. That finals went five games. Um, 
Game of Gladiators played with a stand-in, actually. They had Shad playing as Carrie instead of Durasio. Um And i have that's a player I really like. I hope he gets a big break sometime in the near future. I think he has a really good attitude. He's nice to play with. Um, I think he's playing on a team in Div 2 this season. He used to play for Viking GG, which obviously some of their players uh, became Says he's on Game of Gladiators D2 and some became Hustlers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hope. Um, I was. I mean, that was good. Uh, obviously, this was also Game and Gladiators' first tournament with Quinn on mid. So he's. I don't remember where he is in the EU. If he's in Romania or something, I think he is uh, playing from there. Uh, so obviously playing on really good ping and very invested in this team. He's also streaming a lot because I think he doesn't have much else to do. I think he's just living in an apartment there, uh, away from what he otherwise he would do, which I don't know what would be, but he would He'd probably play Dota at home instead. But uh, yeah, so congrats to them. Uh, obviously, Team Spirit would have liked to win the whole thing, but I think they are still in pretty good shape. They also showcased something new, right? They changed one player. Uh, they don't no longer have uh, Toronto Tokyo, but instead they have Laurel on mid. Uh, and we talked about that in the previous episode that he was probably going to be a really good fit for them, and so far so good, right? So, um, I guess that's a good transition to the DPC, right? Because now we can it is. We can look ahead because the DPC is beginning today, but only for China. Uh, so let's start with that. Um, so the Chinese DPC, we're, we're quickly, let's just quickly do top four predictions, okay? Top um, four. Oh my or God. Or do you want to do top two? Let's do top. I say top four for China because there's four slots, right? Okay, that's fair. I need to look um, at some of these rosters. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of the names will be familiar to people, but obviously a lot of things have changed, right? So there's PSG LGD, there's Extreme Gaming, Aster, then there's Aster Ares, eHome, and there's Invictus Gaming. And then the two uh, lesser known teams, I would say, is Knights and Dawn Gaming. But the players, especially on Knights, are really known. So it's Ego, Alacrity, Flyby, uh, Felix Chiaoba, and XCJ. So a lot of big names in the Chinese scene. Uh, but I, mean, yeah, I the think the big is question mark is how PSG LGD is going to do, right? The yes. roster is completely gutted. They have two players from the last season. They have nothing to say and why. The other three are new faces. So Shiro, Planet, and I'm not sure how to pronounce the nickname of their offlaner, unfortunately. Um, yeah, no clue. And he has no other names. He's been playing... Yeah, he's a pretty new player it's in this team. His only previous team is... Zhang Yu. Zhang Yu. Oh, there it is. It's yeah, you're right. X-I-A-N-G. How do you say that? Is that Zhang? No? I think it's Zhang Yu or Zhang something Yu. like this. Yeah, close to that anyway. Uh, he's 19, so a young offlaner here mm. from uh, PSG LGD. Uh, Extreme Gaming is a lot of really familiar faces. It's Ghost, Paparazzi, JT, PYW, and DY. Aster, Mane, XWY, which is less known. XXS, Boboka. These two have been playing together for literally an eternity. And then offlane is Siamese, or sorry, five is Siamese Cat. Um, I think those are the main noteworthy like teams in terms of rosters that people would be familiar with. Wow, Paulson um, is playing for IG, huh? Yeah, wow. Paulson's playing for IG with Emo, Dust, Irving, and Q QYQX. What a name. It sounds like a derivative in math. Um, All right, I'll start. Yeah, take your pick. I'll pick Team Aster to win first place. Second right. place will be Extreme Gaming. Third will be PSG LGD. I don't think they're going to... I mean, who knows? That's like complete guesswork. And the fourth one's kind of hard. Uh, I will go with IG, who came up from Div 2 last season with okay. Mr. Emo. Yeah, I like your first three as well. I don't know if I would choose the same order. Um I think Astro or Extreme Gaming are probably the favorites on paper for me, based on names alone. We don't have much else to go by so far, right? Um, yep. I think I'm going to pick Knights to take the last slot. Um, but they might also get higher than fourth, is what I'm saying. But yeah, I think the those four teams are probably my favorites. But it's really interesting in China, because something that has been a problem for 
years is that they've just been recycling the same old guard a lot, right? Like it's just been these very experienced players swapping around in teams and not so much new blood. I think in the recent year or two, China has really showcased a lot more new talent, and that's really exciting to see. Like this Div 1, there's a lot of nicknames that I don't recognize. Um, and some of them might be the next big star, right? And it feels like China, to an extent, needs that. Um, needs a little bit more of a of a new perspective in some of their in some of their teams. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Maybe PSGLGD is going to completely own as well. Like it's a total wild card for me because I don't know uh, how good they're going to be with this with this roster. But Shiro's twenty one. Um, the oftener I, I forgot how to say it again. Was it Zhang Yu? I think uh, nineteen, and then Planet is twenty four, so a little bit more experienced. But um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. To right, see. And yeah, they started playing today. Yes. So very new. Let's go over the other to DPC South East Asia. So that's three slots, I believe. Yep. Okay. So we have Boom Esports, Talon, Fnatic, Blacklist International, Bleed Esports, Team SMG, Execration, and Geek Fam. And SEA, it feels like they always have like these major shuffles with the same players, basically. And no exception this time around. I mean, a lot of recognizable names. Dubu is now in this region officially again. Uh, He's playing for Bleed. Yeah. And okay, so I think the the most. Blacklist sounds really good based on name. Blacklist sounds really good based on the roster. So that's the, the most noteworthy one, right, of these new names where you're like, who the hell is Blacklist? I haven't watched SEA Dota. And I mean, even if you have, the, I don't even know if they've played anything until now. Um, but it is basically the all-star Filipino team. It's Raven, Carl, Cuckoo, Tims, and AU on position five. Uh, I have pretty high hopes for this team. I think they're going to be really good. But they might not be really good right out the gate. Um, but yeah, pick pick three. Uh, obviously, Boom, Fnatic are probably standard choices here, right? And then it's between, for me, it's probably between Talon and Blacklist. Yeah, it's tough. Um, but Boom has also changed quite a lot, right? So who knows? Um, they have Yopash, FBZ, and Sefer, but then they have X Nova on five, which you could argue is an upgrade. Yeah. X Nova is a very good player. Uh, and then Natsumi on carry. Um... Fnatic is Gabby, Armel, KP, DJ, and Johnuel. So they replaced Jabs for KP in the offlane. Uh, and now Jabs is on Talon. So, hmm. I guess I'll pick first. I'll take Fnatic. I'm going to say Blacklist make it, actually. So let's say Fnatic, Blacklist, and... Oh, I do like the roster of Talon, too, though. I'll still say boom. It's going to be a very Those competitive th- region, yeah. for sure, with these four teams. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't really feel like when you look at the rest that the other teams hold a candle to them, though, does it? No, like, it does not. It is possible, obviously, but I would, be, I would actually be surprised if the top three isn't among these four. Yeah, agreed. Um, that would be surprising to me. I'll choose uh, Blacklist International to get first, actually. All right. As a surprise. Uh, I, I'm going to say Boom is the fourth, actually. So Blacklist, Fnatic, Talon, and right. then Boom is out. We'll see. Yep. Okay, on to North America, I guess. Sure. We have Shopify Rebellion, a.k.a. the old EG. Uh, Thayuth Gaming, which has Esk. It's the only person I recognize. Uh, Nouns, of course, TSM with some changes. Bait with Mr. Dendy himself. Five Rat Four Staff, which we had the pleasure of casting so many times. Felt like it was always them we were casting yeah. last season. Alpha and Wildcard. Hmm. Wait, why does it say Wildcard came from Division 2? They were definitely uh, Div 1 was there last some season. Sort- uh, it's because the slot of KBU US was transferred to them, and then the slot of Wildcard was transferred to Bait. Ooh. So that's why it looks this way. But yeah, Wildcard, oh, the, okay. the team has been in Div 1 for a while. So, hmm, okay. I mean, and this is only two slots. 
two slots. We both pick Shopify, obviously. Yeah. So who do you pick for second? Is it TSM, Nouns, Wildcard, or Bait? Yeah. So Nouns, they have Yamson, Gunner, Moo, Lelis, and Husky. Yep. So all pretty well-known names. TSM, Tomato, Brile. That's the only two that have remained. Uh, yep. Kasane, is that how you say it? I think so, yeah. Ari and White Mon. I think TSM is kind of an unknown, if I'm being honest. Uh, yeah. And then Bait is the story I think a lot of people will be rooting for, myself included. But who knows? Yeah, so four Ukrainian players as well as Moos. Uh, and to my knowledge, the entire Bait team is already boot camping and is going to be an NA for the entirety of the season, right? So. Stonebank, Dendy, Funic, Moose, and Lodine. If you guys missed the guest episode we did with Dendy recently, I think it's very much worth a listen or view. Uh, he talks about this team, among a lot of other things, mainly history about himself and Dota. So that was very enjoyable. Um, yeah, and Wildcard also with a couple of moves, right? So the only, they only have one player from the last roster, which is Sammy Boy, right? So it's Sammy Boy, Flea, Let's Sunlight... Babitic and Ark. Was Fleet so not on the last wildcard? I don't remember. No. They've, he's definitely played the same way at some point. The four. Uh, Alex seems to not be playing at all, unless he's playing in some EU team in Div 2 that I haven't seen. All right, well, uh, my second team, I'm going to go with my heart, Cinderin. I'm a okay. Suns fan after all, which means I go with my heart, even though it always fails me. Right. Bait, second place. Uh, that would be quite the story. Um, I think if I had to say who is the favorite to be second, it's Nouns. Even though the roster has changed. TSM, I don't know, man. I could be wrong about them. but I feel like TSM might be really good. They might one, be. Actually. I have yeah. no idea. Uh, I think I'll pick them. But I think it's probably fair to say it would be shocking if Shopify doesn't take one of the two slots. Yeah. Um, as usual. Um. But then between bait nouns and TSM, I don't really have a strong favorite actually. Um, so I'm I'm gonna take TSM, but it's with a small edge, and I I think it's unrealistic that any of the other teams can hold the candle to these three in terms of getting overall second. They can maybe take a series or a game off them, but I don't think they have the consistency to get second in the league. Agreed. So, all right, South America. Yep. This is two slots as well. We have. E.G. <laughs> with Pakaz, Chris Luck, <laughs> Whisper, Matthew, and Panda Boo. Cade, Stars, Infinity, Ravens, Alliance, Dot Latam, Infamous, Beast Coast, and Thunder Awaken. This is actually some... They got some organizations, and they're really putting N.A. to shame. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. It's uh, cheaper to have a team in S.A. Costa Bile is on Keed Stars with 40R, Tavo, King R.D. I mean, those are names I know. And that's not yeah. even one of the big orgs. He is an, a familiar name, though, right? I've, I think they've had a maybe. They've teams in CSGO, maybe in Valorant, do they? It's definitely a name I've seen before, so it's not a, a new org. A Brazilian esports org founded June 1st, 2010. Their first CSGO team was acquired February 24th, 2015. <clears throat> Wasn't that the org that became, or at least some of the players became that legendary Brazilian team with Fallen and if they, wasn't that Keyed Stars that then became Luminosity? I Am I, know. okay, anyway. I don't know the lore. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, okay. I, I'll pick, pick your two. I think the two are Beast Coast and EG. Yeah, those are the safe picks, right? Those are the teams that generally for this region have just been doing the best for the last few years. So Beast Coast is K1, Dark Mago, Sacred, Godzilla, and Stinger. So a little bit of a switch up there. Um, and for EG, Pakaz, Chris Luck, Whisper, Matthew, and Panda Boo. So as far as EG's team goes, I think my two overall favorite core players in the entire region are in the same team here. I think Pakaz and Whisper are, to me, the the two most consistently super high performing core players that the region has to offer. Um, so them being in the same team, I think is really powerful. 
Uh, I think Matthew really stood out last season as a huge, he really stepped up in terms of leadership and shot calling for the team. So I think EG's going to win. Um, and I think Beast Coast will get second. And my wild card for second, if it's not one of those two teams, is it's either Infinity or Keyed Stars, I think. I'd say um, Keyed Stars. Yeah, on experience, like you, the the names are really familiar there, right? Costa Bile, Adriano, Tavo, King RD, KJ, all of them have a lot of experience. I think there's some, there might be a a case to be made about like just raw skill and like motivation in Infinity's roster, right? Parker, Leo, Style, Frank, Genic, and Prada. Cool to see a fully Peruvian team. I feel like we don't do we? How many? Oh, actually, we do have three fully Peruvian teams this time. Almost four, because Whisper is the only one not Peruvian in EG. Mm. Wait, holy... Hang on. Is two-thirds of all players in SA Div 1 from Peru? 1, 2, 3, 8, 11, 14, 18, 23, 28 out of 40 players are Peruvian. That means if there's a Peru major, they're going to go that crazy for these two teams. actually crazy. Is that that's not normal, right? I'm not like I, I don't just know. forgetting things here. Twenty eight out of forty players are from Peru. Yeah, and definitely not that ratio. I that ratio I don't feel like we normal. usually have that ratio. That's that's wild, actually. Wow. My goodness. All right, moving on to Eastern Europe. We have how many slots? Three. We have VP, Navi, Team Spirit, Dark Side, One Move, Bet Boom, Hellraisers, and Namiga Gaming, who I will not be rooting for. To cast, at least. Okay. Um, I guess we should just quickly mention some teams that people might not be familiar with name-wise. I guess highlights. Uh, Dark Side is the team with Ramses, Rebel, DK Fogus, Roger, and Soneko. Um, then we've talked about Spirit already. Navi's roster is quite different now. They have V-Tune, Carry Still, and Lay's Offlane and Sweden Strong 4, but now they have Nikki Cool on mid who is, uh, I believe, a newcomer to Div 1 entirely, and Malady on 5. Um, VP is now a very different roster. It's Krilat, Squadix, or Squad 1X, Noticed, Sayush, and Dukalis, also some familiar names. Uh, Betboom touted to be the all-star team of this region. Pure GPK, Nightfall, Save, and then on 5, Toronto, Tokyo, which caught a lot of people by surprise. Hellraisers is the Hawk, Depressed Kid, Miro, Antares, and Solo. Uh, Namiga is Kiritouch, Malreen, Vazia, Hellscream, and So Bad. I still think that nickname is so funny. <laughs> nickname yourself So Bad. I think bad. one of the rosters that people recognize the name that you mentioned is Dark Side with Ramses. I think that is going to be a shit show. Just no inside it, knowledge at all. It's a wild card. I've heard very, very many people say that both Ramses and Seneca are beyond toxic and they're on the same team. So mm -hmm. I, I would never Maybe bet on that team. Two negatives make positive, right? That's yeah, that, how it goes. that's definitely how it goes. Uh, uh, with toxicity, it's definitely how it goes. If two toxic <laughs> people in a room, they're really toxic to each other, they're like, okay, I see myself in you. We're good. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's how it works. Yeah, that, that's my experience in Dota pubs as well. They're always logical. If you have two toxic people in the same team, uh, it goes way better than if you have one. <laughs> fact so i would um, go with bet boom like you said all-star roster uh, i think they're i mean the only question mark is toronto tokyo on the five uh team spirit even though toronto tokyo is not on there anymore they're still going to be really good i'm sure i like larla a lot i think that guy's really good and then the third is harder i think there's a drop off probably so you said so far you said bet boom spirit right yes yeah I don't know anything about the Virtus Pro players, but they always have a good team, it feels like. Mm. Um, hmm. It's hard, actually. I'll go with Navi, okay. V-Tune, Nikki Cool, Lace, Sweden Strong, and Milady. But I think there is a Milady? big drop-off between two and three. Is that how you pronounce it? Isn't it Malady? Milady. <laughs> Yeah, it's malady. True. It is yeah, malady. Okay. Malady. Like, 
Um, I mean, if we cast them, I'm definitely saying Milady. So Milady. Um, yeah, I was leaning the same way, but I don't know. I agree with top two, and then the third is either Navi or Hellraisers. I so you don't think I'll Dark Side is going to do well, huh? I'm I'm kind of with you that they're a wild card. Like I wouldn't be shocked to see them get top three because I think their players are really good. Um, but I. I don't know. I probably more likely have them on like fourth, fifth. Um, but yeah, again, not surprising if they do make it. So I, I think this region is stacked as fuck, by the way. I think all the teams mm -hmm. can take games off each other, literally all of them. Um, so I think EU is going to be really cool to watch. And then the question is, how strong are they going to be in the international stage? As usual, where this region generally doesn't perform very well outside of, you know, we had this. We had the year and a half of total dominance from VP, and then we had, uh, I want to say, six months of spirit. But aside from that, this region generally doesn't get top three international placements. So we'll see this year if, yeah, um, if they've got what it takes. But yeah, Bed Boom Spirit are pretty much locks for me. Almost, I mean, I can't say locks, but they're the favorites. And then I pick Hellraiser's third. Um, probably Navi fourth. All right, and then on to Western Europe, which has, of course, four slots. And yep. we got, let me bring up all the players to see what the changes were. Tundra, Liquid, OG, Entity, Secret, Game and Gladiators, Nigma, Galaxy, and Into the Breach. This is obviously the most jam-packed uh, region in general. I think you could have said China last season. Mm -hmm. But considering how much change they had, this, I think, is clearly... The most competitive region that we have but things can change obviously patches change a lot like when you say most competitive region do you mean the region where the teams are closest to each other or where the average team is best average team is best i guess yeah oh, okay because i think i think eastern europe is going to be closer than this one personally. i think yeah like but. uh yeah the, yeah i meant the best yeah the most world the best teams, teams yeah, are in this region I right i now. agree with that they could yeah. change though i agree so, so we have to defending pick half TI of them. champions Tundra, third place TI Liquid, second place TI Secret. So top three of this TI are in this region, yeah. obviously. Then we have gaming gladiators that are just coming hot off a win in uh, the Bet Boom tournament, like we talked about the Xmas tournament. OG Entity, uh, you just. So what's changed? So Entity changed their carry from Pure to Watson. Watson was rank one um, for a short while in. In the EU pubs, very talented carry player. I think he's going to look good on this team. Uh, Nigma Galaxy have replaced Miracle, who is um, taking a break. Uh, for I believe it's for health reasons. I think that was announced. Um, will be replaced by Amar on carry, which I think is his true role. But we need to see some more hero pull out of that guy. Uh, and then Into the Breach will probably be the team least people are familiar with. So we'll quickly mention their players, O-Taker. Supreme, Zibe, Immersion, and Kidaro. Um, yeah, pick your four. I think this is hard. Cool. Choose four. This is hard. <clears throat> so the patch hasn't really changed, so Tundra's in my top four. If the That's patch fair. changed, I actually might think about not including the top four. I think they're very Do you think there's some team. sort of... Okay, so we've seen all sorts of versions after TI, right? Where it players lose motivation or take a long break or just chill because they find you know they've reached the top of the iceberg mm -hmm. and now um is that how you say it anyway um no they've reached the pinnacle um of that iceberg so, yep yeah exactly um do you think these players are still super driven and super motivated and they just keep going or do you think they're gonna you know i think it's very natural to maybe kick it down a little bit after winning ti but I think if you rest on your laurels in EU, you don't make it. So Agreed. So what do you think? You still have them top four, though. You, you think they've still got it. I mean, I and think the, the like drive. At, after a few months, it's going to look like they're cruising, maybe. But if you consider how ridiculous the region is, that wouldn't actually be the case, right? If they were just cruising, they'd get last place. Well, so I think they'll do relatively well, but they won't be like... You don't think they'll get first? Not only they'll get first. I think Team Liquid uh, on paper I'm is the you. best team. Okay. Uh, I'd say Team Liquid, then... Man, Secret is kind of a question mark with Boom. Yeah, so know. they got Boom instead of Nisha. Yeah. 
who is now on Liquid. So that's the that, big roster that's move. The, honestly, there. the main reason I'm picking Liquid to be number one is because I think Nisha is just god tier. Yeah. So I'll pick okay. uh, Liquid, then Tundra, okay. then OG, probably, and then okay. Entity. So I don't think so Secret... no Secret. I, Game and Gladiators would be close. I don't know about... Yeah, I, I feel like replacing Nisha, they're going to have to prove, to me at least, that they can play at that level sure. again because yeah maybe it, it could have just been like one of the, like i've seen things like this in basketball where somebody like it's completely different sport so it doesn't really translate directly but you have like one guy that's just fucking god mm -hmm. and then he gets injured and the team still plays really well because he was b hogging the ball the whole time <laughs> you know what i mean oh, <laughs> but that doesn't really yeah. exist i mean but it does to a degree yeah. because sometimes strategies like the way that teams play is around a player so that i guess is the closest comparison right I'd have to see what the hell that even looks like because I think that is the biggest change that like to get rid of the player that you play completely around that carried you so fucking hard. I don't know if you can get top four, but we'll see. Okay. And obviously Gaiman just won that faith. tournament, right? So they could be in that. Yeah, but a lot well. of these teams weren't there. So that's still like how much stock do you want to place in that? Actually, none of them were except Nigma. Nigma was the only team out of these. I, I'll talk about Nigma. I'm 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 rooting for them. Obviously, being a Middle East yeah. boy myself, but I I don't think they're going to do well. I think Kuroki is going to end up retiring this year, after TI maybe, and Amar mm -hmm. will have to have, like you said, a bigger, uh, hero pool. Which I think, when was TI? A couple months ago. I don't think that's enough time to add that many. Heroes. Yeah, it was in October. Yeah, so two and a half months ago. So maybe for yeah. season two they'll do better, but we'll see. Yeah, I I. I... I don't want to call retirements or anything like that. Um, I think two of my favorite players to play with in pubs are in this team, both Mind Control and GH. I love playing with those guys. They're and awesome. I, I still think, like, just in terms of raw talent, I still think this team has got it. But at some point in the last two years, they just, they lost. I feel like they kind of lost touch somehow with what other teams were doing. And I think maybe they were too slow to adapt overall. They had this one tournament. Which one was it? The... Um, the Riyadh Masters, right? Where they, got, I think they got third, and then actually looked pretty good there. But the problem was that that was the exception rather than the rule uh, for Enigma in the last two years. So, um, I I feel like if they catch their stride, it's either going to be because we have a really long patch like this one, where now they're catching up and they're getting the right ideas and they've figured out what they need to do for themselves, or if we have a total shakeup patch that brings certain things back to an old state that they were really good at, right? Um, I think one of those two things, if we, if we, can, if we get like a, a patch that changes things in quote-unquote the recent way that we've had, I don't think that's going to be really good for this team. So I'm kind of with you. I'm not, I don't have high hopes. I don't feel like there's been anything inspiring me to believe a lot in Nygma. Um, I, don't, I think it's, you'd be hard-pressed to say Amar is an upgrade over Miracle, right, for this team. Uh, he has to prove himself on carry, so yeah, we'll see. Um, all right, my top four. I'm going to choose not OG, so I'll mm. take Tundra, Liquid, Entity, and Secret, I think. Um, I think Entity with Watson are going to look really good, and I believe, in, I believe Secret can do it with Boom. I, I'm with you, though. I think Nisha was the standout player last year for this region, if not the world. Um, but I think people are sleeping a little bit on how good Boom is. And I think the, the question is how Secret are going to adapt. Because I think Boom plays less carry-like in the mid than Nisha does and more active. Which means they will probably want either Resso or Crystalis to take a bit more space than usual. Mm. But I don't think that's necessarily bad. Um, like so, you sorry, said, a large said, part of why said, Nisha looks so good was also they set him up really hard, right? You said so. Tundra, Liquid, Secret. Who's the fourth? Entity? Or Entity, Gaiman? yeah. Okay. Entity, yeah. Um, I would be surprised yeah, if anybody... So Into though. the Breach, I think we... I mean, no offense to them. Hopefully they end up like surprising people, but I think mm -hmm. we would choose them to be Div 2 after this season. Yeah, so two teams have teams to get go. relegated too, right? Yeah, and I honestly, I feel like it's Nygma. Like, the, yeah, the competition is so too. ridiculous that they would, have to, they would have to like hit the ground running immediately. Yeah, so, I agree. But hopefully, I mean, I'm rooting for them. That's uh, one of the teams that I definitely root for. Okay. Uh, that was all regions, right? That was all regions. 
So let's move on to a Skeeter interview that apparently occurred. Uh, who was this with exactly? Should have done my research on this. I don't know what this was for. He did some interview, <laughs> but the important uh, he, thing is that there's a quote. I believe it's in. Um, hang on. Why can I not remember this? Uh, I mean, I, I think he just he did a he did an interview in Slovakian, right? But it's with subtitles, so it's been deciphered. Or what? That's not. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> it's, it's been, been deciphered. What's the, what's the word? Translated. I'm looking for no. Um, when you write when you write a thing down, ins ins it? is it inscribed and conscribed? Con All right. So inscribe is something else, and conscribe is when you get told to go to the military. So you're you're, <laughs> o for two. What are you trying to say? Um, Transcribe. Whatever. That's right. Yeah. Transcribe. There we I knew, go. I knew it was a scribe there. All right. Yeah. All right. So the enough. quote. Thank you, chat. Uh, the quote is: Ice Frog had not been working on Dota much the past two years, according to rumors. That's why they weren't any big changes of the map or economics. Ice Frog supposed to be back since the last patch, so we can expect bigger changes again. Valve also told us that we can meet Ice Frog, meaning for the Team Tundra, because they're TI Victory. Not sure when, <clears throat> but probably next year. Uh, that last part I just threw in. We don't really need to talk about that. Uh, so Ice Frog supposedly not been working on Dota for the last two years. Sindarin, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so, I mean, this is a rumor, right, that has been circulating. And we've talked about it on the podcast as well in the past that the, the vibe of Dota has been different um, in terms of, like, not necessarily in the individual patch itself, but the like the way change logs read or the way changes are made and the fact that the map effectively hasn't changed for like three years which is unheard of so um that obviously will spawn those expectations or the, those not expectations um those rumors um also we've heard about you know valve claim a new ip in neon prime is ice rock maybe working on that is he working on code name citadel that was leaked or theorized or whatever there's a lot of speculation here um don't know uh i think the whole thing about them meeting ice frog is kind of cool i think that as a i don't know if you would call it prize or whatever of winning ti uh but i think it's <laughs> i think it's it's cool that it's something so special to meet one <laughs> of the developers of a game right no like that it's like this mythical creature almost. And I don't know if this is going to be a standard thing where every TI winner gets to meet Ice Frog or whatever, but. Um, well, a bunch of cool. the talent met him at TI2, I think it was, right? Yeah, I, I met him at TI2 mm. and have not seen him since. <laughs> not seen him in any crowd or in any. You've been looking capacity. too. Capacity. Been looking real hard. I mean, I, I would probably recognize, right? I mean, it's many years ago, so at some point, maybe you forget faces or whatever. But I think I would recognize someone that was that important, right? Um, but anyway, it's um, yeah, it's it's interesting if this is true, right? Like we can think about it from the perspective. I don't know if this is true. I don't know if any of it is true. Um, but let's entertain the idea that Ice Frog has not been working on the on the game very much anyway in the last two years, and it's been doing other stuff for Valve, and that he is taking a bit more of a not necessarily lead role, or but because if he is working on another game and he's a lead there, I don't think he's going to be lead on two games at once. Uh, but he might be more involved with Dota, perhaps? Question mark. Um, I think most people would say that would be a good thing, right? Because this community has a shitload of faith in this guy for a reason. Um, and the biggest thing is, if it is the case, I think the biggest thing is that would mean we are probably getting big map changes and we would get big changes to the economy. And that's what I have wanted for two and a half years now. So this has me hopeful, if that's true. But again, it's pure speculation. But I, I do want to see some major overhaul to those two things in Dota. Uh, it would really make things fresh again. Uh, I think the game is... It's in a good state, don't get me wrong. Dota is good right now, and a lot of people really like the patch. But at the same time, I think something that really drives this game is, is those like big shakeups that we used to get. I mean, it feels like it's been very It's long. It's weird because, obviously, like a few years ago, I was playing Dota a lot, right? Did for many mm -hmm. years. And 
I didn't realize it until maybe like six months ago or something that obviously I've been playing a lot less this last year and a half, two years. And I realized at some point it's like, because it hasn't changed and I'm used to these big patches. Like it doesn't have to happen like every six months or anything like that, but mm -hmm. these big patches really revitalize it for me. And I'm not sure yep. what the disconnect is. You are is, not the only one. But there's some people that sure. don't want that, right? Like the disconnect between me wanting that and other people not, I'm not sure what the difference is, but maybe it's because that's what I've become accustomed to. I mean, playing the game for 15 years. My God, it's more than fucking 15 years, actually. That's insane to me. But the last, especially the last year, I have like barely, I mean, a lot of this because I've been developing ability rain, obviously, but right. like not having these big map changes makes a huge difference. It's not just the map change, it's just the game in general. The flow of the game is the same for two and a half years. It's like, you have this template of what you're supposed to do in the game, and usually these big patches happen enough that this template, if it's figured out, it gets rewritten completely. Right. But now it's yep. like, when we're casting a game, I'm not going to lie, especially when it's like a really low tier game, you just go by the book based on every single other game you've seen, mm -hmm. and it, it's just like a script. So it's the same shit over and over. I'm like, I'm sick of it. I'm not, I don't have fun playing Dota right now at all. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. I, I know, I know there's a lot of people that think like you. Um, and I, like I said, I personally would like to have a major shakeup as well. I'm, I'm not as burnt out with the game, I think, if that's the right thing to say as you are probably, but, um, I would agree. I've I've had times where I've been way more excited to play Dota than I am now, and I think a lot of it is just could be we're getting kind of older fatigue. Maybe we're just old. I mean that that too, obviously, but also just fatigue with the game itself. Right? It's nice to have things shaken up and have things be new once in a while. And I'm with you. I don't want it every six months either necessarily. I think in the past sometimes Icefox has been going too crazy for me. Um, but th this last this stretch that we have now is probably the longest we've had in Dota 2's history without map changes. For example, it's and there's been a, some economy that was changed, I want to say, about a year ago, but uh, not as much as we had hoped, right? So would be nice. Um, I guess on the flip side, one of the upsides to have a patch that's this long is that it's easier for the viewers to follow the pro scene if you're not actively playing a lot, right? Because then you kind of probably feel like you can understand the game better and you can follow it better because, like you said, it's more, it's more similar, to what you've seen for the last year. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the positive that you get out of it. And I think that's also the positive that a game like League of Legends had for a long time is that aside from, I think there's been a couple of times in League's last five, I don't know how many years, because I watch sometimes. I'll watch like Worlds. I'll watch a game or two because I'm like, I used to play this game a lot. I wonder how much I understand. And a lot of the things for the last many, many years were in terms of like quote unquote script very similar so i think in that game a lot of people could just watch and understand from one year to the next just only watch the world championship and still get it right um i think that's an upside but that's pretty much the only I, I, am i wrong in saying that most players want change I don't know. More than man. stagnant gameplay. I, I, I feel like most people want things to change, and that's more fun. I know that my game like is different. Like, the vast majority of players are casual, right? Isn't it fun when your game is shaken up? You need to try something new. Um, that's what I thought with our new game. New items, new heroes. I told you like, that we... Oh, we'll talk about it in a minute, actually. We're going to wrap this up. Oh, one thing fun. I did want to mention is that apparently Skeeter, in the interview, said something, Cinderin. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard this one before, this idea... He likes the mm. idea of two Roche pits on the map. Uh, oh no! <laughs> uh, it's happening. Okay, it's fucking go, happening. We can put the podcast on pause. Go rub one out, and then come back, and we'll finish it. <laughs> I don't know, that'll take too. I like edging, so it'll yeah. be take too long, probably. At the uh, with some good old ASMR, day. huh? Yeah, <laughs> no, not the ASMR. Hey, uh, uh, I keep ASMR super non-sexual. Okay, it's just for oh, relaxation. Yeah, for now. What do you mean for now? I've been listening for like 10 years. Yeah, but you keep saying it needs to be more and more intense yeah, because now you're getting... F yeah, it's all aggressive shit now, so like, yeah, I guess past... You know, we both know what the next step is, Shen. <sighs> yeah. I'm, I'm actually afraid that that would happen at some point, but so far yeah, nothing. Probably. Luckily, I have a very low libido, so that kind yeah, of takes that's... care of it for me.
that definitely helps. All right. Good for so you. So let's move on to the last segment, which is Ability Arena Season 4 came out, Cinderman. Uh, kind of yes. preface what we're going to do last week, but I'll, uh, I'll cover it up or cover, cover it again. The seasons are now... So this is why I wanted to piggyback off what you're saying. Ch people like change. I really thought that having stuff come out every month, shaking things up every month, is what auto battlers needed because they get stale at times. People overwhelmingly thought it was too much. We were doing too much, which just completely flabbergasts me. So the seasons will now be two months long. Uh, the battle or the the damage formula has been changed. So you're taking more damage early. So early game matters a little bit more, but late game you're taking less damage. Overall, the games last about two to three rounds longer, so you're going to be getting like a lot more Gabins. Uh, we did, we kind of did a God balance uh, change uh, in terms of like how we're looking at it. Before we just picked like, it's going to sound really ghetto. We we looked at the win rates of the gods and we're like, okay, this god's doing pretty well. We should probably try to match her with everybody else. But it was kind of arbitrary just picking that point. Mm. We. We nerfed the shit out of everybody's favorite god, which was Aghanim, and it was needed based on our old way of looking at it, because he was overpowered compared to everybody else. But people had a lot of fun with him, and then not so much after. So we kind of reevaluated that, and we've kind of, it's, I mean, to some degree this is maybe power creeping, but Aghanim has been essentially rolled back to his old version, so he's way fucking better now. You're gonna get a shit ton of Gabins. And we've tried to buff every other god that was not doing super hot I to see. his level. Right. So the gods will be more impactful than before as well. Mm -hmm. uh, battle pass is way better as well. Uh, because it's two months, we doubled the levels from 40 to 80, but the total XP needed is the same as last season. Uh... So you're basically leveling twice as fast. So for people that are casual, they can just you know hop in and hop out. They sh be, should be able to get relatively high levels. That's um, good. And then I wanted to go over the new gods, which I actually have a slideshow, if you don't mind, Cinderin. All right. I mean, it's your podcast. Yeah, thank you. So you can talk about your thing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, we will be having less updates uh, because of the two se the two month season. So we won't be talking about this every week like it feels like it has been. I'm sure some people will be happy about that. Uh, first God, we don't really need to talk about too much because it's the old Chaos God. We got rid of Chaos Gods in general. And added Sideshot Man, which is voiced by Purge. It's the guy that you uh, can have one free reroll every round, spells sell for full value, and your hero rerolls are one less gold. I thought this was really boring. People love this God a lot. So we brought it back permanently. Isn't it funny how... Your like perspective of okay, people want new shit all the time, and people like these complex gods and whatever. Sometimes there's just beauty in something simple that you feel like you can grasp and use and understand, right? I'm not saying so. The thing is, on high level, this is one of the hardest gods to play, right? Yes, because you can do shit loads of stuff if you're really efficient. But for just the average player, this is just it's just like one of those okay, I'm gonna play an ability arena game. This this is going to be nice and going to give me a good game and not be completely crazy, right? Yeah. Um, so sometimes the simple stuff is really, it's really good. And something I didn't mention is from now on, including this season, all new gods that we put in the game will be a part of the battle pass. So, uh, and the five gods that we're going to go over, four out of the five of them are free. So you don't even need to buy the battle pass. You just need to play. So basically every five levels in the battle pass, you're getting something for free regardless if you have a battle pass or not. And every single one of them is like extremely what we would consider high quality. Okay, so these next ones are actually new. We have Vacation Aghanim, the fifth form of Aghanim in the game because I'm obsessed. Uh, his ability, it's a passive. Each spell in your shop has a chance to be worth two points instead of one, and they'll cost five instead of six. I like this one a lot. <clears throat> I played it what? <clears throat> me, I, played it once or, I played it once or twice in the streamer tournament. Um, I think this is a fun concept. It's obviously very volatile, right? Um, 
But I think it's very high skill too, because it's one of those where I think this god rewards people that are good at pivoting. Because you're going to have one idea and then suddenly, oh, I got a double roll on something. I could go in this direction instead. So you need to be like creative, I think, with this. Um, in comparison to, say, the classic agonim that's very straightforward and side shot man, etc. That's also straightforward. Um, I think this one is going to be more popular than quite a lot of other ones. Because something I'm starting to think is that people maybe are shying a little bit away from gods that have a give and take and would rather play gods that are just strictly have something straightforward positive that they can wrap their heads around and just play their strategy. Mm. Um, so stuff that was really hard to play, for example, would be Alchemist, the old one, where you took damage for losing. Gambler was really hard if you didn't weren't like really confident in how the game was going and the flow and everything. Um, what was there? Cave Johnson, I think, is stupidly difficult, right? <laughs> so... Like those that have a massive downside in order to get a massive upside, I think something like this is just, this is great for every skill level of player, right? It's just feel yep. good. Oh, nice. I rolled a two. Um, and then for the best players, they can use this to pivot and get some cool strategies going. So I really like this design. I think it's good. Yeah. And it says 5% chance. It's not, it's per slot of the shop. So as you're upgrading yep. your shop, it obviously you're going to have a better chance of getting, it. but yeah, Kind of piggybacking off what you're saying, the thing, the reason we designed it this way is because it incentivizes you to go spells that you maybe don't normally go for, and I think that's really yep. cool and it's strong, yep. even if you're because obviously the game isn't perfectly balanced, but there's some spells that people don't go for that I know are fucking good, you know. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this incentivizes that. Next one yep. is Prelix. Uh, she has a skill called Bringer of the Faithful. Basically, you're given a creep, a melee creep, at the beginning of the game. And every time you upgrade your shop, you can choose one of three abilities for the creep. And each time you upgrade your shop, you also gain stats on the creep itself. Uh, I think there's like six or seven creeps that you can get per, uh, per level. So you're basically getting three out of whatever the pool is. So you're not guaranteed to get the th same three every time. And we've, we've buffed them so that not... Like the ones that may may sound shitty or actually are not shitty, if that makes sense. So this you, means when you have a max level shop, your creep might have like thunderclap, frenzy, yeah, some sort of aura, all that stuff. Yeah. So the yeah. it does go by camp. So like the tier ones will be worse technically than the tier fives or whatever. We yeah, had like the last mm -hmm. level shop is the ancient. So you get like the ancient granite golem aura right. that gives you fifteen percent extra HP or whatever. Where uh, does this creep spawn? It just you can move it. Move it wherever you want. Oh, you can use this as a regular. Okay, interesting. I didn't get to play this one. Yeah, this one has been okay. extremely popular, actually. And yeah, I, we're gonna we're gonna have to nerf it. It's a little too good right now. Mm -hmm. uh, this is another one of those that's just a feel good, right? It's like you get an extra unit that has upgrades that benefits your entire team. People are gonna love this shit. That's good. Yeah, it's like a build yeah, a bear. It, it does You're sound just, pretty powerful theoretically. Like I knew I wanted to put some sort of a like we had Chen God concept. It was really fucking boring. Like you just get a. It adds a creep or something like that. And then mm -hmm. I had a brainstorming session. This is this usually does not happen, by the way. Usually we get terrible ideas from the community. But our internal beta testers basically came up with this idea. And it is this is an S tier design, in my opinion. Extremely good. I think it's really fun. It's also hard to balance, but I think it's fun. So Yeah, it's a little too good right now. Uh, vaca vacation. Faceless Void, which was created by one of our coders, uh, F.A., uh, you have two abilities. One is called Time's Bond. Couldn't use Time Lock for this one, obviously, since it's in the game. Uh, you can basically select... You can, you can lock an individual spell in your shop. And, of course, it does scale based on shop level. So, like, shop level one, you can't do it. And then, mm -hmm. it, at the end of the game, you can lock up to two in your shop. And the other skill, basically, every time you roll or the shop refreshes there is a 35% chance that the spells that you have locked, the two that you have locked, will lower in price by one. So you're choosing which ones you want. You roll. If it goes down, you can choose to buy it or you can continue to roll it to try to get it down to, you know, one or even zero. This one is high skill cap. Yeah, I think it's difficult. It's a bit stressful uh, because you're kind of looking at the shop the whole time because you want to min-max it. And I found that 
like once you start playing it a lot you get used to it and it becomes really fun and uh all that but at first it's a bit overwhelming no. because you're not thinking about other stuff of the game like positioning like the first time i played it i had no idea i was like doing so bad like i was seventh out of eighth like I had 20 HP, I had literally no idea because I, the whole time I'm just spending it trying to min-max the shop, you know? That was like right. an old version that had like four. You could block it four times. That was absurd. Oh, Jesus. But yeah, with two, that's... it's much more manageable. Um, but it's not like... Like Alchemist is like highest skill cap, right? So it's not quite up there. Uh, but this one... I think this one is cool still concept. really... I, I think using this well is something for experienced players only. I think... I mean, you can use it on a basic level, but I think beginning players or very casual players of this game will probably not have a good win rate with this is what i think i think this requires really good game knowledge to yeah that's probably right to get good value but that doesn't mean it's not fun right like you can whatever people people who are not good at dota play invoker right and mm -hmm. it's it's really hard to play but that doesn't mean it's not fun so and last but not least center my favorite god my creation terrorist <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so, what did you think when you made a god called terrorist? What, yeah. Did you have like any sort of concerns with that? Like the idea of so, that being a god? Terrorist. Yeah. Just don't say terrorist game. god. So here's the reason that we did it this way, and it was my call, by the way. I vetoed this originally, mm -hmm. and this has been like we've had this god. For the most part, like we changed some stuff, but it's been in the game internally for like four months. I've been so excited mm -hmm. to release it. And it was called CS God the whole time. I see. Then we had the, our Cardsmith contest, which I'll talk about in a minute. And one of the concepts, which I thought was kind of cool, like, oh, that gives me some ideas, was called Counter Terrorist God. Uh huh. Now, because, because the name was CS God, I'm like, we're never going to add another Counter Strike. Like, how could we come up with another Counter Strike related god? Like, what do we come out with? Op God or some shit? Mm -hmm. But I have to leave it open. I want a counter terrorist god at some point. So I see. Okay. It, this is terrorist. We've had, I think, one person has complained about it, which is less than I thought. It's literally Valve IP. This is literally what it's yeah, called in the game. There's nothing wrong with it. Anyway, this is what he does. Beginning of every round, a bomb is planted. And after X amount of seconds, it blows up, dealing damage to the enemies. Now, here's the caveat. The, the bomb, it lasts, let's see, level one, it, it's 18 seconds, which is a really long time. That's how long it takes to go off. And it deals 90% of current HP and damage to the enemy. Each time you upgrade the shop, the explosion damage gets lessened by 10%. So you're making it weaker, but... The timer goes off earlier by two seconds so it's like a give and take whether you want to upgrade your shop fast mm -hmm. or just leave it at like level three or four or whatever the case may be and then the other skill which is called clutch play if you if you get beat before the bomb goes off it's diffused which means the enemy gets three extra gold next round if the bomb goes off and you win you get three extra gold that if round. you win before the bomb goes off you don't correct so the idea is to make yourself like kind of tanky, outlast mm -hmm. them, the bomb goes off, you finish them off. I have been having yeah, so pretty, much fun with this god. This is pretty fun. Like this one's cool. If I do say during so the streamer fun. tournament, you, you were you were telling people, please pick terrorists, please pick yes. terrorists. And I think two or three did and they loved it, right? Yeah. They thought it was really fun. So yeah. this is an interesting concept. There's not many gods in the game that I think inherently reward tanky play, except maybe this one and Boomer Centaur. Um <clears throat> Uh, either that or what's it called? GLaDOS. GLaDOS. Yeah. So it's, I think it's nice to have this as a, as a play style option that you can go. So yeah. Cool. Uh, people seem to like all the gods. Usually there's one or two that are like, eh, so far so good. Nice. Uh, one thing that we added in the battle pass as well was this terrain, which I think you played. It's the Dust 2 arena made by Invalid yeah. Nick. I have been exclusively only playing this because it makes me feel like a Counter-Strike pro again. Somebody was telling me the double doors are facing the wrong direction. I didn't realize they had changed it because I'm a boomer. And when I played competitively, this is how the doors were. So they're staying that way. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, yeah. It's the boomer D2. That's right. So that's the update. Uh, and of course, we had the streamer tournament, which you were involved. You got 
second place. Sing Sing got third, and Monkeys won. So he finally yep. gets the Galaxy God terrain. Congrats to him. There was... He just crushed it this time. I think, what was it? So the maximum amount of points you can get is 50, and I think he got 44 or something. And I got like 30... I want to say 35, something like that. Like, he he completely crushed us. It was... It was not even close. Like, in the la the last game didn't even matter yeah. for placement unless he got literal last. No, I think even then. No, if he got literal last and you got literal first, it would have been We could have been tied, tied. I think. He is, ended up winning by 11 points, 44 to 33. It was not close. 33 even. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so he, own, he just owned this time. Uh, Well-deserved. He got he first won. in three out of five games. One game and he, I think got, he second. got second in one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pretty ridiculous. So, that was nice. I mean, I was positively surprised that I got second uh, after getting first last time. That's a pretty good. I, I was happy with that. I was like, that's a good yeah, score. Yeah, we had BSJ so, Blitz, Tsunami, Cap, that. and Purge. So I think Tsunami said he hadn't played since season one. Uh, but other than him, I know a lot of the other guys have played quite a bit. So cool to see so many people show up. Uh, and then finally, uh, the Cardsmith contest, like I said, is over, but we'll be announcing our stream soon where we'll be picking the winners. I'm not sure when that's going to be. Maybe even in the next few days. So just check Twitter for that. And people ask me all the fucking time about, will you be adding extension support for the mod? Yes! Buka is working on it. It will be added, hopefully, in the next couple weeks. If he can get to it. But that would be nice. Right. Thank you, Buka, for being a god. Thank you, Buka. Okay, that does it for... Uh, this episode of We Say Things. Thank you, Sinner, for showing up in your beautiful thank you guys uh, Christmas sweater. Really like that sweater, boy. I've never seen it before. I wonder how long I'm going to be using these sweaters for. You you get a pass for using in the entire winter, right? So another like month and a half at least. Yes. Can use Christmas sweaters. I'm sure. Oh, let me ask They're you nice something. Nice and comfy and warm. You guys have a Christmas tree? I'm guessing. No, we don't. Why? Uh, we haven't had a Christmas tree since we got our dog. Why? Because we had a feeling that getting a Christmas tree would make a mess. Wait, when you did get a Christmas tree, was it real or fake? Real. So why don't you just get a fake one? We've, we talked about it this year. We might get one next year. I don't understand. Okay. I don't want to... I don't want to... I don't want to Christmas tree shame you. Okay. Is it not an important aspect? I love having the Christmas tree. It just makes me happy having it up. Even though it's fake. Mm -hmm. We used to have it like... A real one back in the day when I lived with my parents, and I miss that. But obviously, with cats, it's just not a good idea. Mm -hmm. I love having this shit. I leave. I was going to ask you how long you leave it up, but since you never had it up, that's a dumb question. Last time oh. we had this up till fucking March. I refused to take it down, and then the wife made me eventually. So let me think. So I'm trying to remember. So three or oh, four years ago, I think we had a tree. I don't remember. We got rid of it at some point in January. But I don't remember when. Uh, and my parents have a fresh Christmas tree every year. Um, and I, I, th I feel like they get rid of it at some point in January as well. Maybe mid-January or whatever. Um, so yeah. The, the way we usually do Christmas is that we have Christmas Eve. Uh, just Susie, me, and the dog. And then Christmas Day we go visit my parents. So there's a Christmas tree there. So there still is a Christmas tree every year, right? It's just not at home for us. Mm. Um, but we still get to to see it and experience Onion it. Onion hasn't but even seen a Christmas it's not, tree? It's not... Honestly, it's not that important for me, if I can say that. It, it doesn't matter that much for me. If but. I could probably count on my one hand how many things are actually important to you. That's the sad reality of your life right now. And WoW is yeah. one of them, by the way. WoW and Dota. <laughs> WoW, Dota, your family, which includes your dog, of course. That's three. I can't decide whether it's a good or a bad thing. I think it's a bit of both. If you care about very few things, you can focus on them a lot. Mm -hmm. But it also means there's less things that get you excited, right? That's right. So I don't know. Maybe if you could flick a switch and care about a lot of stuff for a little bit, that would be nice. But yeah. You're just dead inside. I understand. Yeah. You've, if you've played Dota competitively, then you right, lose a part of your soul. The five things. Your family includes your dog course okay uh and this, i like uh, that you know this you're giving me the things i I'm care giving about you the things you care about uh, okay that okay that family world of warcraft dota 
family and four different video games. Eating. <laughs> eating. Food. Now, I'm not talking okay, about survival. Good. You, you enjoy food, food unlike any food. other. That's good. That is good. And. And. Wow, the fact that it's. I'm struggling to think of a fifth. Uh, does not. Right now, I care a lot about poker. Okay, another game. Poker. So. But yeah. I mean, I don't know how wide the categories you want them to be, right? Like, is friends and family one category? Yes, it is one. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So friends, family, and dog are one category, but WoW and Dota are two. Well, why do you why do you disclude your dog from your family? That's just part of your family. Why do you need to even no, say it's that? It's just like you take two separate video games and they get a category each, <laughs> but all friends, all family, and your pet are one. Yes, I just found that's that right. interesting. That, that's all right, just I mean, how fair it goes. enough. I think most people would say video games, family, and then there's space for another three, you know. Okay, but video games, enough. family. <clears throat> <clears throat> or video games includes poker, so just games. Sure. Games, okay. family. Game. Okay, that's and good. That's I like it. this. That's it. That's your whole list. No food? Oh yeah, food, sorry. Yeah. Three. Game games, family, and food. I mean, I'm struggling to call it more. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Uh sleeping? <laughs> you enjoy sleeping. I mean everybody cares about sleeping, right? It's kind of a cop out. True. What else do I really care about? <laughs> I mean, I like certain sports, to be fair. Okay. So I think I would put that in there. Sport? When have you talked about sports ever? No, not as like a fan of watching sports, but I do like to play. I like, I like the things. idea like, of sports. No. Yes. Shannon, whenever we're at an event, I'm like, hey, Shannon, let's go to the gym. Hey, Shannon, do you want to play table tennis? True. Hey, Shannon, pool. do you want to play pool? You know, like, yeah. I like sports. I think I'm you not, just like hanging not, out like with your friends sport, and though. family. Doesn't matter what you're doing. All right. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. You Have a great, best. happy new year. It's been five days. Bye. Have a great one. We'll see you next week. Peace. Bye. We say things that don't Subscribe. Bye. But thanks for bye bye. Bye bye.